So perhaps it's me under the spotlight today as we have Gillian Williams, who is the founder of Clarity Video and Gillian's expertise in delivering top tier content solutions for SMEs is unmatched. Clarity Video stands out as a company that truly understands the unique needs of its clients producing content that not only tells a story, but delivers results. Gillian, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you inviting me on. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to talk to us about your business journey. It would be great if you can just kick us off with sort of telling us what it is that you you know, you know do at Clarity Video and, and what it is you're all about. The Clarity Video, we produce corporate content, video content, and it's generally marketing uh, collateral. It can be internal videos. Um, now, I'm increasingly working with PR companies. Um, they're using video a lot more, mm. uh, a lot of social content, um, essentially helping corporate entities engage with their audience, uh, generally through storytelling, but sometimes it's event coverage. Uh, but whatever we do, we always try and use the story framework because it helps you know, people retain things. Uh, so that's what we do. It's We're pretty much industry agnostic. So I say sort of corporate because we work with sole traders right up to international brands such as Smeg UK and Qatar Airways. Uh, there's some. And uh, so it, it is a huge huge variety of clients that we yeah. work with. But, uh, yeah. And you say you say a lot, a lot of companies are using video these days. I mean, <clears throat> you're, you'll be a lot closer to it than I am. In terms of the video content on sort of social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, and stuff, is it still like the way to go? Is it still sort of like the the best way of getting your message out there? Yes, I think it is. I think that video isn't a one-stop shop. I think it's best used as part of a wider campaign okay. you know, involves like email and SEO and, and, and such. But in terms of building an engaged audience who feel like they're becoming part of your tribe and identifying with your brand as some, you know, as an ambassador, potentially, you know, that's the, the ultimate goal, right? Yeah. Um, then yes, video is unparalleled. Uh, but the, the means to do so have become more complicated uh, okay. as audiences have become um, more advanced. I would say, you know, it used to be that you could just throw a video up there and you can get the like simply by having a video. Nowadays, it's much more difficult to engage an audience and retain them. But those who can do it well, they reap uh, great rewards. And what are the tips and tricks then to sort of delivering that content that, that, that does get the engagement? You think about your audience. That's okay. that's the number one thing. Uh, a lot of companies, they get excited about things that they've been working on because they put a lot of time and energy into it. But often... It really, it's it's internal news. It it doesn't really matter to to, to the outside, uh, yeah. Yeah, to your external audience. Um, so that's that's one thing. So always think about things from that perspective, and structure is hugely important. So with your social content, we use the three act structure, um, but slightly adjusted for social. So it's a hook, your conflict, and then your resolution, and yeah. that framework fits with pretty much any content on social. And by using that, you're tapping into storytelling, which your audience knows it's it's how we communicate yeah. naturally. Yeah. Um, but also that format has become the predominant way that engaging content is created. So your audience is familiar with that structure. It's an excellent way of presenting your uh, story in an engaging way Absolutely. and retaining their attention through the video. And that, that's important because the longer that you retain somebody on your video, the AVD, average view duration, the more that video gets pushed. So then you get that organic, um, that those organic views, which uh, you know, are highly valuable. Yeah. Uh, so that so the, the biggest advice I would have is look at things from your audience's perspective. Always be thinking about that, not your own. What's important to you is it's not necessarily point. important to them. Yeah. Um, and point. then follow follow a structure that's proven to work. Is, you know that that resonates through through you know all of your sort of mediums, doesn't it? Whether it's the website and all that sort of stuff, there are so many websites out there that that we call it sort of like we we weeing all over the page because it's all about what we do, what I do, and things like that. Whereas actually, your audience they're not really that interested in what what about you? They are interested in what problems you're fixing, what yes what solutions they you've got to their problems. Absolutely, and it's you know it's that old is that classic uh, marketing uh, phrase, isn't it? You know. Don't sell the features, sell the benefits. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, in, in video, engage an emotional reaction to the benefits. Because okay. if they have that emotional resonance with it, then that means something to them. 
um you know marketing now is very good at showing you the benefits it's those that can create that that emotional connection that decisions and buy and purchase are based on emotions aren't they they're, they're, exactly they're yeah by logic but really the main driving force for a decision to purchase something is an emotional decision that's that's exactly it so that's that's what we try and do is not just shoot beautiful video yeah. but try and structure it in a way that makes it as impactful as possible yeah very good very good so clarity video how long how long have you you've been running now so clarity video itself has been running for about three years now um yeah, yeah. so companies registered three years ago well three years ago in november um and it's been growing pretty well ever since and uh, we've had slides up and downs like the beginning of this year was a little bit quiet but we're yeah. booming right now um and to go from nothing you know just starting off and you know with sole traders and just whatever yeah. i could get um to now working with uh sort of international brands is is fantastic uh but i've been working in well, uh, before this, and this is where the advantage comes in. So just prior to running my uh, Clarity Video, I was working in brand management in the finance industry. Uh, before that, I was a marketing manager and digital marketer. And I have a sort of long history in media production, working in radio, uh, small amount of TV, uh, produced a feature film that got released yeah. internationally, um, worked in, uh, I think it's a theatre publishing. So, okay. and I've been doing camera work since I was a teenager. So all of these skills they've come together into clarity and so that that that's been a bit of quite an advantage i would say and what made you what made you set it up because you know there's a lot of there's a lot of budding entrepreneurs out there that they, you know they've got that self sabotage going on in their heads they've got a career they've got a successful job if you like but would like to make that leap into being a business owner but don't for whatever reasons what what was the catalyst for you to make that jump it was honestly it was a combination of reasons uh one was frustration with the work that I was doing, uh, the finance industry, a good company I was working for, but it's quite dry. So it wasn't really igniting anything in me. Uh, and then I was producing this feature hosts um, on the side. And I really loved being back in production. Yeah. And I was also frustrated with working with content creators as a brand and marketing manager. This The, the, the convoluted processes we would go through to get content created and there just seemed to be a lot of bloat a lot of wasted time you know budget yeah um, and often what you got wasn't exactly what i asked for um so that that was a little frustrating and um also cliche i had a motorcycle accident which very nearly took me out completely oh, wow. um yeah yeah it was uh broke both my arms and my back and my you know the whole the whole thing and so i'm lying in recovery uh, i'm thinking well what do i I actually want to be doing it. It's, what am I doing? Not, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily brand management. I went back to that for a little while. And yeah. then realized, no, I definitely want to do my own thing. Oh, good for you for making that jump. So you've been in business now for three years. So as a business owner, you've you, you've seen some growth and some mm -hmm. clearly probably some challenges over the, over the last couple of three years. What would you say has been your biggest challenge and how have you overcome it? I think the biggest challenge is uh, cash flow. For, yeah. for you know new businesses to be honest yeah. i was reticent because i i worked in media production for a long time i didn't know what the state of the uh, the industry would be here and right. what sort of level of opportunity i'd have so i was reticent to borrow money yeah um so maintaining cash flow was a challenge um, and then to overcome that you just have to diversify um, and iterate all of the time and until you found something that resonated with uh, you know with the market um and not to get stuck in that so this time last year things were booming with uh, podcasting yeah. um and podcast production and so i was even i sort of set the brand clarity podcasts and I, I even had it in mind to just pivot entirely into that fast forward to about six months ago and what transpired is the podcasts market has become very saturated yeah and it's difficult for brands to build an audience cost effectively unless they're doing it internally because the costs of production, like my costs, are often prohibitive because they're just not going to see the growth that they would like to see. Yeah. And, you know, and then ultimately marketing in whichever form, you're trying to get to as many people as you can. So if you break, broke it down, I think that there were other means in which they could, and it sounds like I'm sabotaging <laughs> the service right now, <laughs> but the reality is, you know, if you put that much effort into building your email list, then in reality, 
you know, you're probably going to be reaching more people. And I think that that's become uh, more uh, uh, more clear. And because Clarity is a corporately sort of focused brand, I don't really do sort of consumer level things. Or, you know, um, I don't do much work with artists because that's just not what we do. Um, that's that's something that I pivoted away from. So I changed the service, made it more focused for marketing managers in terms of just creating content as a one-off project. And that has really boomed. So that's that's how we overcome those difficult times is iteration, listening to what the market's telling you yeah. and responding accordingly. I think that's exactly those three things are exactly that's what I've just written down you you know there's <clears throat> there's sometimes when we start a business there's a temptation it's what we want to do so therefore we're pushing mm-hmm. our agenda through but if we're not we're not listening to what the market's telling us in terms of what the market wants then you know you push the wrong products and you cash flow is a massive issue there so being agile being open to what the market's what the market's sort of saying it wants and being adaptable and changeable to flex with with the market is a really good point um, yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a there's an interview I did with um, um, Phil Shadbolt. Actually, he talks about his business. Been in business for 32 years, and sort of like, wow, you've been in business for. So actually, I've had five businesses. They're the same name, same company, but I've had to reinvent the wheel five times because I've had to change the marketplace. So yeah. just because the corporate name is is one name, but having that adaptability, having the ability to change what you offer to match you match the marketplace is really important. Yeah. What about um, an opportunity? If you could wind the clock back and go back to that day you started and do it all again, what would you do differently? And you know, if you would do anything differently, what would it be? I spent a lot of energy on brand. Um, okay. The brand is important, no doubt about it. And as that was my background, I thought, right, if I have a very strong brand, then I'm going to it's going to be easier to attract customers. Um, what I would have done differently is actually spend more time on product. Yeah. Because I think that if you have an outstanding service or product that just absolutely delivers what the client wants, then regardless of your brand, word of mouth will get you more business. Okay. And then you build the brand, you know, in time. But I think that I would have changed things around slightly and spend more time working on product first and being yeah. more focused on just delivering the absolute best. Customer service has always been important yeah. in terms of what the service was exactly that I would have probably spent more time on that in the first year. Again, that's an interesting point because you think of brands typically as those big companies, don't you? Like the Coca-Colas mm. and the Nikes and all that sort of stuff. Their, their, their main focus is developing the brand, whereas small businesses, actually, it's, it's advertising the product. So it's an mm-hmm. advertising strategy to sell the product, to get the cash flow going, to build the company, because brand investment takes an awful lot of time, energy, money, and you have to you know, reach a lot of people to build that brand. Not to say you don't have the brand. The brand can go Mm. along with it, but actually, like you say, is advertising and spending time promoting the products as opposed to trying to promote the brand. Yes, yes. But but also having that killer product to start with, you know, that's, um, and because, you know, advertising a product that's mediocre, you you just throw money away, you know, that's that's money that, you you know, it's, and that's what I really would have, that's, that's what I would have done differently. Yeah, it's a good point. It's going back to that market awareness and having the product that matches the market's needs and wants. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Let's talk about a little bit about time because, you know, running a business can be time consuming. It can take a lot lot of um, lot of our days and things like that. And, you know, everybody's got 24 hours a day. How do you manage your time and manage your priorities so you're working on the right things? Uh, well, it's a challenge. We have a large family, um, five boys, although one moved out last year, but um, there's still we have four lads at home, yeah. uh, two of whom in college, um, and then we've got the little ones too, one of whom is now homeschooled, so that's even more challenging. So my day typically looks like getting up very early, starting some work then, getting people to where they need to be, then off. If it's on a shoot, then, you know, that, that's whatever scheduled that's that's uh, on but from the studio um then i'm here as early as i can possibly be um at work and i'm home sort of mid-afternoon and then i'll mm-hmm. do more work then when the kids mm-hmm. are in bed then i'll do more afterwards and that's the advantage of that is you get to you, I, I manage to structure my schedule around my family needs and the business mm-hmm. needs yeah um rather than just being stuck into a corporate structure that uh that might not might not service what i need it to be yeah um and then in terms of prioritization a CRM. If I didn't have a, if I didn't use, uh, I use HubSpot, and thankfully I'd had experience using various CRMs 
you know, my previous roles were in, in marketing and, and brand, brand management. If I didn't have that experience, I, I just would have failed 100%. Yeah. You know, like having tasks, having things scheduled, having deals, knowing exactly what's where, who's attached to what, what the deliverables are, what the timelines are. It's, it's, it's just absolutely essential. Um, and then there, I have strict policies where there, if a task is complete, there is always another task to schedule. Even if the project's complete, there's a keep in touch call in six months time. Okay. There's this, you know, there's something else. There's remarketing. It's a positive whatever next step to it. And yeah. Absolutely. So that I come in in the morning and, you know, I turn my CRM, it tells me what I have to do for the day. Um, there's a lot of value in that actually because again we you know as humans we tend to sort of like juggle lots of things at once and decisions take energy take focus and things like that distractions coming up so taking the time which quite often people don't do is take the time to prepare take the time to build the systems to build this like you say the crm in the way that you want the structure the way you want yeah so it means you've got more mental capacity to make decisions on important things as opposed to trying to remember lots of to-do lists and lots of little activities to do and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, in terms of systems, what I wanted to do was from the very beginning was create systems, was put systems in place as if the company was about three, four times bigger than it is and to yeah. consistently do that. So that as I, as I move forwards, I could just, people could just come in, and I can just add them into the CRM, yeah, give them like certain that. permissions, and everything is there. You know, and, and then the same with invoicing. It's all systematized. Um, and I, I maybe went a little overboard with it when I first started, but I wanted to have that stability and to make sure it was easy to grow. And I wouldn't get to a point where to grow would mean that I'd have to go through and create a system with you know, two years of again. Yeah. yeah, two years of you know legacy documentation to input. That sounds like an absolute nightmare. So uh yeah, that's that's been there's, there's a couple of sub- subconscious points there. One is you're thinking like a bigger business from the start. So that's mm. consciously making decisions like a bigger business in that subconscious sort of way. But then the other is the law of the vacuum. Having that sort of bigger system and bigger CRM enables you to actually, we tend to fill stuff. If you've got a garage, you tend to fill right. the garage. If you've got a bigger garage, yeah. you tend to fill it with more stuff. Kind yeah, of that, that makes sense. Whereas if you have it smaller, it's kind of like you fill, fill it up and then it's it's it doesn't grow because you've limited limited with the space so there's a couple of subconscious things going on there that that um that, that sort of help that growth which is really cool yeah yeah in terms of team then so clearly you've got people supporting you and stuff like that what does what does the sort of bigger team look like in in in, in the day-to-day uh, running of what you do well it's very small uh so a lot of people assume that there's like at least 10 15 people in clarity and that's the that's the strength of the brand um, which is very useful because when I have larger brands coming, they yeah. assume that yeah, there's a large team behind it. But for the most part, it's me. Um, and then freelancers, um, I use uh, a couple of uh, virtual assistants yeah. um, as and when I need to. Um, but I'm quite frugal, to be honest. Yeah. And um, I, I, I like to think I'm quite efficient. Um, so I do have people from the film industry that I lean on if I need them. So there's photographers, videographers, and uh, colorists that I will use so if a project demands more than just myself, then yeah. I'll bring other team members in. Um, but if it's a small project that I can cover myself, then I will do. And the advantage of that is my costs are less than they would be because I don't have these huge overheads. I'm more agile because I'm not managing a large team. Yeah. Um, and uh, because of my background in media production, I'm able to wear a lot of hats. I could do sound, I could do lighting, I could do camera, yeah. I could do the editing. Um, and so the work is consistent. And um, and uh, uh, the way things are at the moment, it's getting that the, busy to the point where it's unsustainable. Okay. So I will be building things out and then yeah. you know, having more sort of uh, leading on more sort of regular team members. Yeah. Um, but I've been careful certainly in the early years to not over expand yeah and then be trying to you know chase the payroll uh, yeah so, so that's, yeah, that's very good point works. sustainable growth that's um that's manageable that fits within your your ambitions your goals but you, you know you're agile with with a resource around you that if you needed extra support you've got that wider team in terms of the contacts yeah. the freelancers and things to be able to draw on yeah yeah very good very good what about the future? So where, where's 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 the where's Clarity Video going in the future in terms of the business? What are the next steps? Where are you sort of wanting to take it? The Clarity Video itself, um, I just want to expand out what we do, but offer it 
sort of uh, more nationally, get yeah. more clients in. Event as, as as things move forward, I want to start to step away from the business in stages. So on front line, okay. I'd have you know I'd have staff doing that, and then I'd like to get a manager to help on things. Then you know sort of shift to the point of being an owner yeah. more than you know a managed director. Um, and that that's the goal for Clarity Video. Um, in terms of my own work, I am increasingly trying to move into commercial directing, which is like directing oh, wow. ads, okay. um, yeah. which then is a route into sort of television and film directing as well, oh, hopefully cool. in the future. Uh, but certainly in the near future that's where i'm trying to run so clarity video will still operate services yeah. current clients and grow as i as i build a team with that but then personally i'll start shifting over onto that side of things as well to feed that um sort of creative output that i that I... sounds exciting yeah it is it is and it's uh things are moving well so it's uh it's all looking looking good so far and what what keeps you motivated what keeps you driven doing what you're doing in that sort of entrepreneurial space and things what's your what, what gets you out of bed to sort of do and do what you do I think I'm just a naturally driven person. That sounds like such a, you know, a, a, a sort of nauseating answer. But I just, I, 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 I can't stand being static. Okay. Um, years ago, I went on um, a trip to Sri Lanka with friends, six weeks. And the last two weeks, I was desperate to come back. I was right, just, yeah. I was, I, 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 I can't take that much time off. It's just ridiculous. Um, so I have a lot of energy. I like to be busy. I like to be achieving. Um, and... I, what I do love about this work is whenever I go and work with a client, it's a great day for them. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's something novel and everyone's having a good time. Fun. And, yeah, exactly. And uh, so you create that atmosphere, you get the best output you can. And then when you deliver a video that the client's delighted with, you know, that that's really motivating. Seeing the business grow, that's motivating. Supporting the family and uh, sort of our future goals. That that So there's lots of sources of motivation. Um, and I think that it gives me uh, quite a positive form in which to direct my energy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, certainly the conversations we've had over the last 12, 18 months and on, on, on occasions we've met, you know, they've been certainly you're very focused, you're very driven and, and you that passion and that energy comes across in abundance. So I'm sure I'm sure the, the future looks fantastic for both what you're doing personally, but yeah. also clarity video. Yes, I really, really thank you for coming on and sharing a bit about your business journey. Um, before we go, where can our listeners go to find out a bit more about what you're up to, what, what Clarity Video is up to, where, where can we point them? So Clarity Video, uh, so at Clarity Video uh, on uh, Instagram, clarityvideo.co.uk is uh, the website and um, uh, at Gillan Williams on Instagram as well. If you search Clarity Video, uh, you know, you'll you find know. you. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll come up uh, and on the socials too, and then uh, at Gillen Williams if you if you want to follow me. Uh, very good, Gillen. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank you.